Hello, this is Ian Kilbarn, Energy Systems Engineering Technology at St. Lawrence College, Kingston, Ontario, Canada. This is a video on Red Screen Expert on how to do grid connected photovoltaic modeling. It assumes that you've already chosen the location for your facility and for your weather data. There's another video on that. We're going to begin on the facility tab. So we're going to start with the opening screen here of Red Screen. This version is configured as the paid version. If you have the free version, you can do all these things, but you can't save your file. Facility. This one uh, for us is pretty simple. Uh, what we're modeling is a power plant, and what we're modeling is photovoltaics. You can see all the various um, choices that are available in Red Screen. You can do a lot of stuff. Most of the other fields here are really optional informational fields that you can fill in um, if you wish, and then that information will appear kind of as window trimming on other parts um, of the program as you go forward. Down here we've got Red Screen's estimate of the cost per kilowatt hour of different types of generation. Again, not something that's uh, important for us right now in this uh, in this exercise. Next tab here is energy, and uh, first thing we're going to do in here is set the export rate. So this is uh, how much we're going to get paid for the electricity that we produce from our photovoltaic array, and uh, dollars per kilowatt hour will be just fine. And I'm going to make this 20 cents, just to pick a number. Next thing we're going to come do is come up to the top here and step two, technology. And here I am going to once again choose photovoltaic as my technology. And I'm going to choose level two as my analysis type. Level 1 is uh, super basic. It really doesn't get you uh, very far in terms of modeling a real system. You have to input the capacity factor, which we hardly ever know. At level 2 is a much more sensible place to begin, in my opinion. So we click on Level 2 and we get many more inputs that uh, will make it a lot more realistic. We're going to play around with the, uh, with the slope a little bit in a moment. Uh, azimuth. Now, if you ever don't know what one of these things means, you simply hover over it and you can see a little question mark there has appeared. That is context sensitive help. So if I click on that, most of the time I will get a really nice little description of what this thing means and uh, maybe even suggesting typical settings for it. So what this tells us is that azimuth uh, means what direction is your array facing and they define zero as being south in the northern hemisphere, unlike zero on a compass, which is north. Um, zero means south here, and then you can be either east or west of south. Degrees west is positive, and degrees east is negative. So if I was, for instance, 20 degrees west of south, then I would put in positive 20 uh, down here as my number. I'll come back to uh, slope in a minute. We can choose up here fixed one axis or two axis as our uh, array type. And uh, two axis and it means it's tracked on a tracker and it's going to follow the sun all day long. I'm going to do a fixed one here. We get to choose first of all under here's where we're going to tell it which uh, photovoltaic modules we're using. First step is to choose the uh, technology from uh, a variety of different types. I'm going to choose monosilicon and come in here and now I can go to a product database. I'm going to choose a Canadian solar module and I'm going to choose a 250 watt module or maybe a 200. I'll choose a 200 and hit the check mark here and it will just paste in now the data for that. Um, oh, one more thing. I want to choose the number of units here. Uh, well, 50 units would be 10 kilowatts. 
I'm going to pick 100 units, which will give us 20 kilowatts. You can see it's calculated that down below. Hit the check mark, and it pastes that data into here. So moving forward, um, I have to specify losses. Uh, both There's two places to put losses, miscellaneous losses and losses under inverter. Um, I'm going to put 4% miscellaneous and 0 for the inverter. Um, here's where the efficiency of the inverter goes. I'll put 97. Here's where the capacity of the inverter goes. Well, it better be 20 kilowatts or better. That goes there. Now, already you can see I've got electricity exported to the grid. These are annual numbers down here, as the Dropbox says. It doesn't allow us to change anything else anyway. So at 20 cents per kilowatt hour, that's our export price that we've already set. We're going to export 24 megawatt hours in a year or a total revenue of 4,809. So we've come uh, a long way towards modeling our system just like that. Come up here and uh, by clicking on the show data button, I can see um, a little bit what's going on here. Now, this is the electricity exported to the grid over here. This is the daily solar radiation horizontal from the climate data. Right now, I have not entered anything for slope, and so these numbers are all the same in both columns. Um, if I come along here and start adding some slope, there's our exported to the grid is 24. I put in 20 degrees of slope. Um, now it's come up. It's 26. If I put in 30 degrees of slope, it comes up again, 26.9. If I put in 40 degrees of slope, and it's still 26.959. Let's go back to 30, 26.943. So we can see that 30 is actually better than 40. And in this way, we can keep fiddling with this uh, slope number until we get the optimum export. Or if you already know that you want to build your modules on a 20 degree slope because that's what the racking uh, works out at, or if you want to put them flat, fair enough, just go ahead and put the number in. Uh, for this particular location, I know by experience, the actual maximum production happens at around 35 degrees of slope. And the dollar value down here would be increasing also um, every time I do that. This just shows us the monthly expected output uh, month by month. You have to be very careful about some of these numbers that get pasted in from uh, an outside source like this product database. Uh, if I come along and I change things now, so supposing I change my power capacity from 20 to 10, it has dropped the uh, export revenue in half and the uh, power exported energy exported as we'd expect. But notice it didn't change the number of units. Uh, we've still got a hundred of these modules. Well, that doesn't really make sense. If we've only got 10 kilowatt capacity, we couldn't have a hundred uh, modules. So changing one thing doesn't update everything else. Um, similarly, if I come down here, so here we are, I'm back to 20 kilowatts at $5,400. Um, if I change this down to 50 modules, look what didn't happen. The bottom line did not change. It's impossible to have 50 200 watt modules and have 20 kilowatts. The program is not updating these things on the fly. So be careful about this. These numbers came from over here when I pasted that stuff in. Uh, best practice is to change them over there, let them paste in, and then don't update them here. Another thing to realize, uh, you may find that you can't find the module that you were thinking of using over here in the product database. Guess what? It doesn't really matter um, as long as you pick a module that has the same wattage. Yeah, sure, the efficiency might be different on the one that you've picked, but a 200 watt module always produces 200 watts in standard sunlight conditions. It doesn't matter how efficient it is. What changes with efficiency is physically how large is that module, that 200 watt module. 
a very efficient one will be physically smaller, a not so efficient one will be physically larger, but they're all going to produce 200 watts. So if you're trying to model um, a particular output, it doesn't matter what module you choose. The solar collector area, we've got 169 square meters. That is going to change um, according to the efficiency, and that's something you might want to pay attention to. Uh, but usually that's of secondary interest uh, to us compared to actually getting the number right down here. I can put my cost uh, right here if I want to, and that will be in dollars per kilowatt, um, or I can enter it over on the cost screen. Um, I'm just going to put it in here. I'm going to put in $2,700 per kilowatt which gives me a total cost of $54,000 for my system. Over here on the cost screen, you can see that it's now filled in $54,000. Um, you can get uh, very detailed and complicated on these cost screens if you keep choosing higher levels. Another thing that we can show is annual operation and maintenance costs, or if we're doing something that actually results in a savings every year, compared to the base case, we can enter that down here. Um, here we're just going to do a simple upfront cost. It's already filled that in for us. Nothing else to do. Emissions over here, we'll just take a quick look in emissions. So in emissions, uh, it tells us what uh, Red Screen's version of emissions savings are as a result of this renewable energy system. So base case, we've got 2.7 tons of CO2. Base case means that we're just using electricity off the grid. In our proposed case, we produce all this electricity with photovoltaics, and we have pretty tiny CO2 output, so a savings of 2.6. Notice up here we have this already set for Ontario because it knows where our facility is. Our savings right now at 2.6 tons of CO2, not a whole heck of a lot for a $50,000 investment. If we switch our location over here, we could go Canada, Alberta. Ah, now we've got we've gone from two to twenty tons of greenhouse gas savings. Why is that? It's because in Alberta there is a lot of carbon in their grid electricity. They produce a lot of electricity from coal-fired generation. And so if you save a kilowatt hour of electricity in Alberta, you've saved a lot more carbon than a kilowatt hour of electricity saved in Ontario. So next tab I'm going to go to is finance. Again, I'm going to jump here to level two. I want to do a fairly simple case here. So I'm going to zero out some of these financial factors. Full discussion of this is a topic for a different day. We will leave the life of the project at 20 years. We're going to pretend that we're paying for it all up front, so there's no debt ratio, and hence there's no debt interest rate or any of that other stuff. And now we get a fairly simple result. We can see that this is a cumulative cash flow graph down here. So we can see we start off in the hole by the price of the system, which was $54,000, and then every year subsequent, our financial position gets to be better and better until right now we are at break even at this point here, uh, which you can see happens a little bit earlier than year 10. If I look over here in the chart, we'll see that actually it will tell us what the break even point here is, and it happened at year 9. I can see here on a chart the actual dollars that are flowing. So this system is making about five, six thousand dollars a year. Uh, there's still an escalation rate in here. It should be making the same thing every year. There it is there. This is escalating our electricity rate every year. We started off at 20 cents a kilowatt hour and it's, uh, it's just moving that up all the time. Um, if I put that to zero, we can see a little bit more simply how things work. Now I'm generating $5,400 um, every single year. My equity and simple payback turn out to be at the 10-year mark. You can see here, there it is there. Um, by the end of 20 years, I will not only have paid off my original $54,000, which happens at year 10, 
After that, my $5,000 keep accumulating, and if I stuff them in the mattress at the end of 20 years, I'm going to have $54,000. If I invested this money uh, year by year and earned interest on it, I'd have more than $50,000, 54 at the end of 20 years. And we could show that by choosing interest rates and more financial uh, information over here. And that would model the effect of investing this somewhere else as we receive that money. So that's a, a quick tour of photovoltaics modeling in Red Screen Expert. You can see how you get the, the main numbers that you need, which are the annual revenue, and over here, the years to break even, and pretty quick and straightforward, very powerful tool. You can do this for any location in the world.